All right. Um, I'm fully aware that I am the only thing that stands between you guys and uh, drinks later on. That's not so much the problem. Actually, the biggest problem is I have all of you guys standing away of my drink later on. So we will start actually on time for the first time ever. So if you will just keep pouring in, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, if somebody want to close down the door down there and say we're going to go now, that would be sweet. And uh, I'm going to start up if I can find my presenter thingy. I can. So this is this is me, Morton DK. Um, I run a small little shop in Copenhagen called Geek Way Out. Uh, besides of that, I had done a lot of work for Tech One called Salting, which is actually a bunch of backend developers. They have no clue of what I'm actually doing, which is good because they just push in all my commits. Um, I have a, a column in the Drupal Watch Talk magazine that's called The Angry Themer. Um, I have a tendency to yell a little bit about people, and I've heard now multiple times that I'm apparently is the boogeyman in the developer world, and it's right, I am hiding under your bed, and I will come after you if you put too much markup into your module. Um, besides of that, I am also the classy maintainer, which is a new theme for Drupal 8. I am that with uh, Dave Hernandez. Dave Hernandez, he could not be here today. He is in... Um, back home in the US. Um, this is my Twitter handle. You can yell at me there. If you have comments and stuff, do that or use Google Twig. So, um, so let's go back to this morning. You know, we, we saw this slide. Um, no, thank you, Jules. Thank you for calling us out for being the one who left. But you know, um, as always from Front End United that I've been fronting uh, for many, many years, it's time to stand up. And we will do that. So. Um, how about we open up this session by getting that boo and anger out? Let me hear that. We... What, was that it? That was the only booing? Okay, fair enough. Well, you know, we're very sorry for that. Yeah, right. Um, but you know, come to the sprints on Friday. We're going to get that fixed, getting that shit punched in, and, and getting RC1 getting out. So I'm going to start with talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome has nothing to do with um, the Swedish chef or Ikea. Stockholm Syndrome is what happens to people who have been captured for a long time and suddenly begin to sympathize with their uh, prison guards. So uh, this is Drupal 7 markup. And I've heard the argument that, you know, um, Divitis, it's a feature. I've heard that from frontlanders. It's a feature. It's good I have all these classes, all these diffs, so I can pinpoint everything in. It is perfectly okay with 5,000 lines of code in your PHP template file. You know, the class soup is another feature. That is all part of Stockholm Syndrome, and I'm here to drag us all out of it. So let's just go with, like, no more of that stuff. How no more of that stuff? Well, we're going to go with this, Jubal 8. So what have we done? Well, we have introduced a new theme engine. So hello, Twig, you know, and goodbye, PHP template. Because um, basically what we've done is we've killed the theme functions. And, and now everything is turning out to be a template. And by a template, I mean there's going to be a lot of templates. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're taking the control of markup and CSS, ripping that out of modules and putting it into the theme where it should live. So the files and the file structure you live in and work in on a day-to-day -day basis, that's where it's going to be at. That's the whole point of it. So I have one little exercise we need to do now. We need to unlearn PHP template. Are you ready for that? Can I get you all to close your eyes? I can see you guys. Come close them. So now think about all the awesome stuff you have done in PHP template. Yeah, I know, it's hard to figure out anything. <laughs> it's kind of like completely empty. Okay, open your eyes again. Thank you, guys. So now you're ready for this. This is Twig. Uh, everything you have used to do, you don't, you're not going to do that anymore. When you work, come up to Drupal 8, it's all going to be gone. So Twig is a modern template language, yada, 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 all this fine and fancy stuff built for the Symphony guys and so forth. So, and it's easy to learn. How easy? Well, this easy. First line up there, that's a variable. It's going to print out your variable. The second line is going to be stuff that's commented out. And the third one would be, is where you put functionality in. That's what you need to know. You now know trick. Hooray. Um, the other thing you're going to do with that is you know, variable drilling. How do you get to a variable? Well, in Drupal 7, you can see the upper line there. That's how you kind of got it. You had to remember when was there a zero, when was there the und, the undefined language, not the music rhythm from, from Germany, und, 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 und. Um, we have removed that, and now you drill into it just with a dot. So you can actually go find your data without you know, sacrificing a little child in the moonshine. Um, 
The other thing we have now is we have functions. Functions that you can put up on top of your, your, your variable. So you have a variable, you put in a pipe, and you ask it to do something. Here's like make it pretty and you know, do it now. Um, it could also be a function like uppercase. This, this is how I make my name uppercase, so pipe and uppercase. Um, translate have changed a lot. Uh, translate used to be, we can now do that as a function with a, with a pipe T, or you can actually use the trans uh, function and you wrap your whole string in that so you can put variables and everything in there and just print it all out and Drupal takes care of the rest. That is kind of one of the things where we usually do a lot of mistakes in Drupal 7 because it's such a pain in the ass. Um, controls function would be like, you know, if the person is somebody and do something about that, that would be that. Um, that auto escape thing, it's something with security, I don't know what we're gonna use that for, but you know, if you, if you really need to have your data raw out, you can use a pipe raw and you can get it out that way. Yeah, boo, <laughs> don't do that. Um, so the other thing you can do is inside of a template, we can create variables. So we have variables that comes in, but you can create your own variables if you need them. We're gonna see later on when we begin to play with classes and CSS how you can do that. So basically you, you define a variable, um, you do a set, you know, here I set my variable foo and I give the variable bar and then I'm gonna print that out and that's it. That's all you kind of actually need to know about Twig basically to get everything to work. Um, biggest issue we have got in was actually the new theme classy because we have separated all the markup out of Drupal core and into a theme. That's kind of been one of the, the, the biggest changes. So in Drupal 7 it, it went something like this. You know, you have, um, you know, all the markup gets created directly from Drupal core and it got pushed out to a theme and then you can try to work with it. What we're doing now instead is we're piping that, all of the commands, well, all the variables, piping them through a theme, classy, and then we put out all the, all the markup, all the classes, all the CSS, it's going that way instead. Um, so that means that now you're actually gonna use a base theme and forget about what you know about base themes in Drupal 7 because it's not, it's not the same thing anymore. Um, you have a variable, we send that to, your, to our base theme, which is classy, and that then, you know, seven and stock uh, will inherit from that and then work on it. So all our basic markup is actually now living in classy. So the markup that you want to use just out of the box because you don't want to write any templates, that's where you're going to do that. Um, so if you have your own theme, you need to kind of decide what do I want to do. Are you kind of a nerdy front-ender like me who want to decide everything and change everything on the go? Well, then you just don't define it in the base theme. If you want to have Drupal basic markup and class names and stuff you can actually use to develop on, well then you're going to use Classy because that is Drupal's basic themes and that's what to know about there. So, you know, no base theme defined, you're going to get an empty div and that's it. And that is by, the, by design. It is still my favorite issue when we cleaned up the menu and somebody whined about there was no menu class and they're kind of like, it's a feature. <laughs> um, the thing is, the other thing you're going to be really maybe going to be a little bit tired of. So in two years when we have, you know, 6,000 template files in every theme, somebody's going to come and yell at Lowry for designing this, the theme system and why is there so many template files? That is how it's built. I'm sorry for that already. I'm just going to put it out there. So um, the thing is that you need to define your base theme. And just remember that always if you don't define anything, you're not going to get anything. That is by default. That is how we have designed Drupal. Drupal should not put anything out unless you ask it to. So when you say, hey, I'm gonna use Classy, I'm actually gonna use that. Um, there's been one question people could not figure out how come I'm the maintainer of the Classy theme. Because if you know anything about Drupal, you have Drupal 7, you have to send. And I did a theme called the Mothership, which was pretty much a flaming fire hose through the Drupal theme system and cleaning everything up. And you know, in Drupal 7, we have Classy, which is kind of the same thing as send. And we have Drupal Core, which kind of have nothing in it. And how come that you know, I'm the maintainer of the Mothership but I'm also maintaining Classy and John Albin, who is the maintainer of Sin, which have all the classes in, he's maintainer of Stark, which is basically course markup. Well, I don't know why that happened, but it kind of happened, and you know, submit a patch if you don't like it. Um, this is actually the amount of maintainers we have now. This is a big change from Drupal 7, where this is actually people who are active in the theme community and actually do stuff, and is actually front-enders, um, and it's nice to have them on board here. Um, we're gonna do rounds of hands and clapping of them later on. So let's go into setup. How do we do this stuff? So first of all, your Drupal themes is gonna um, live inside of slash themes in your core root, which I know is kind of crazy. Why don't we hide it down inside slash all slash something so nobody can find it and we can find the noob at the office and laugh of him. We don't, just put it inside of slash themes. Um, 
We're going to have four different files that you can work with. You have your info files, and info files work the same way as they used to do. You have your basic info, you have your libraries, you have your ability to remove CSS, and you have different regions. Remove CSS is pretty sweet, actually. So you have a CSS file you don't want to see in your theme. It came from somewhere. You know, evil module developer pushed it in. You can actually remove it out again, um, and, and it's visible to do that. Uh, so I said libraries. Okay, what is a library? The idea behind a library is that we defined libraries as a collection of CSS and JavaScript files, and then you can call them from either your theme or your module or actually your template file. And we're going to come into why that's so sweet. Um, so if you decide, okay, I'm going to do a slider, because we need a slider, right, on our side. That's every site needs, needs one slider. Well, you're going to add in your JavaScript and your CSS file for that and then define it. Um, here's a very, very simple uh, example of it. It's a small little library. Um, but what it basically does is you define your name, you define your CSS files, you define your JavaScript stuff as well, and then if there's any dependencies. This dependency, by the way, down there, jQuery, if you don't put that into your library, we're not going to include jQuery in your theme. <laughs> that was 32 kilo, that was just goodbye. Um, and again, this is you have to turn stuff on in Drupal 8, not try to use a week of your life to remove stuff. Um, CSS is getting reorganized as well. Um, we're using the SMAX terminology, base layout, component states, and theme. Um, if you don't know about SMAX, go read about it. It's a lot of the things we're doing in Drupal now is built on this terminology, SMAX, S-M-A-C-C-S, dot CSS, oh, fuck. <laughs> There is a, I have links at the end when I cannot figure out how to spell. Um, we also have breakpoints built in. Uh, breakpoints, what do they do? Well, basically, these are your, um, in your theme, you define your image size. We have that as well. If you really want to put in, you know, dumb stuff, you can still put that dumb stuff in um, by PHP, and you do that in your dumb dot theme folder. We're not going to talk about that. First of all, we're going to look into some of the tools, and I'm going to rush through some of, some of this stuff so we can get through all of it before you die. Let me see how much time do I have left. I don't even know. Anyways, so your settings file, this slide and this slide is only here just so you can like find them afterwards and check it out. So also, by the way, remember to disable cast the first time you install the site. Um, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look into uh, our services file. And the service file, what it do is we have a theme debug element inside a trick now built in. And this is pretty much the sweetest shit you're going to see all week. Um, so what we do here is, you know, I go in, I'm trying to figure out, you know, what kind of templates have I used here, and I can, of course, guess my way through all the templates, because that's how we did in Drupal 7, like, like oh, it's called a note, it's probably the, the note template, since that. So what I do now is I have, like, cleared my cache, I'm going to reload it, and boom, what is this? You have, you have polluted my markup with comments of sanity. Um, and let's look into that, what we got here. Bam, that looks sexy, right? Let's look at this. This is every template file that getting called through Drupal. This is going to be in your source code. So you can actually now see where it gets at. You can now have an idea of this is my, my, my suggestion files I could use for it. Even better, when you go look for it, we have provided the path to it so you can find your stuff. I know this has created job security for us for years where you couldn't find anything, but we're trying to actually make it a pleasant experience to be a themer instead of like a nighty, like day to day nightmare. Um, See here what I got here. Uh, 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 uh. So the next thing is, you know, now I found my file. How do I find my data? Well, here comes Kint. Kint is kind of the new version of Crumo. And what does it do? Well, you do Kint.content. Kint content is just, it was not, not found. And I caught the video and I reloaded it. Okay, here we go. So when I do Kint on a, on a given variable, what I get here is like then all of the elements that it puts out. The problem with this and the thing we actually really want to work on in the future is this is very good for developers. It's really shitty for themers because you can see there's a shit ton of data that we don't use for anything, but you know, somebody's going to fix that on Friday. Um, but Kint is the way you're going to get your, your data out. Right on Friday, Kotzer, you fix it? Kotzer is fixing it right now, I can see. He's, not, he's nodding. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, so Twig Debug, this is how you're going to get that in. And this is kind of like just how our life got to be way, way easier. So we, we have the template structure. When you have 125 templates built, built into a system, you know, it's going to have kind of, oops, get a little bit fast. Um, you know, when we, we nuked this system, we removed all the theme functions. Theme functions practically don't exist anymore, and we have added in a metric fuck ton of, of templates, and there is a fuck ton of templates. Um, 
it's about 125 of them. So if you go in and you take a look into um, into Drupal Core and figure out you know what goes on here, as you can see here is um, you know, we have all of the templates and they are built into different folders, so you can actually find stuff again. So we have so at least I try to organize them in some kind of you know um, sensible matter. Um, these are like the basic groups we're trying to organize them in. Nobody says you have to use this organization, but this was a thing we came up with during a month of hate and yelling in the issue queue to how to do that. So it's, it's a way of organizing it. The templates are still doing the same as they used to do back in, uh, back in Drupal 7. So you have your HTML page, you have your page. Um, after the page, you know, you have, uh, you have regions that comes in, you can put stuff in. And inside of a region, um, you're going to get you know, all of your different content. Um, and then you have the note. And inside of the node, that's where you know all of the fields are turning up. We have fields all over the node, and that's actually what I'm really, really looking forward to talk about. Before we go into that, because this is eight years of work, before we go into that, the thing we can do now, because everything is built in your templates, you know, how do you lay out, how do you separate your stuff? Um, how we do that is we use this wonderful function called without. And what without do is you can print out all of your content, and then you can print it out without certain fields. Um, so it basically looks like this. You do content pipe, then you know, the trick function without, and then the field names you want to remove. And it will look like something like this in your template. Just to get this idea into your head, how is it actually we're doing this, is um, here, we do, here we have a, a trick template. Uh, and this is the layout we want to end up with. We have a content, we have two fields next to it, and they're going to be separated by markups and a couple of div and a section tag and an article and so forth. And, and this is what happens when I just print content out right now. Uh, it's printing all of the variables out. I have there all of the fields, and I want to separate them out. So I do content without, and then the name of that field. And so when I print out content, um, it's going to print out all the other fields that are there. And then I can begin to separate them out one by one. Why is that really sneaky? Well, we all know what happens when we build a project. You know, we start by separating stuff out, and then six months later, somebody got the good idea of adding that field that the client actually asked for, and they push it into the code. And you never printed out content because you didn't need that. You have separated everything out, else out. And then what happens is nobody can figure out where it comes. Everybody yells, and it's going to be your fault because you're the themer, and the rest of them are ignorant developers. Um, so now when we're doing this content without, when there comes a new field in, it's just going to be printed, but you separate them out one by one by one. And you then print them out by content dot and then the field name. And that way, you can print each element out, you can separate them as you want, and you get complete control over like, that block of content. So uh, a really, you know, an example of that would be here, you have my left part, my, my, on my right part, I have my field, uh, field image, and on the top, I have my field text. And that's your layout, that's how you can control on each, uh, each node or each field, or you know, if you want to remove a part of an attribute as well, you can do the same thing. So this is a way you, like, you, you cherry pick what you don't want to see, and you can clean that out. Um, but here, here's the, here's the essence of my whole talk. And this has been, um, I'm not known to cry over markup, but this almost makes me a little bit cheery. Uh, it has been eight years of me hating on Divitis and Drupal. And, um, you know, we can ask one question. Well, how many diffs does it take to make a single field with one value? How many diffs should we use for that? Anybody clever in the room? None? How about one? Uh, maybe, maybe. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So here's a field, right? It has a label and a type. And it says, yo. This is Drupal 7. <laughs> this is what Drupal 7 prints out. Um, it has a couple of descriptions that have the field, they have field items and field item. And they can make sense if you want to build all your markup in one way. Um, so this is what Classy puts out. So like, what the fuck, Morton? Didn't you, didn't you say you had removed all the markups? Well, no, no, no. This is Classy. And we want to have basic markup in Classy. So if you, don't wanna, if you don't know anything about how to do all this stuff, you just want to have some classes. You put shit in. This is what you're going to get out. What you can do is you can do this instead. Well, you don't actually don't even have to put the divs in there because we have moved them all out. Um, so basically, out of Drupal Core, if you don't do anything, we just have a div around them just for funsies. Uh, so it's one div, zero classes, 100% Drupal. If we said that you know, a year ago, or actually three weeks ago, that was not possible. That 
patch finally came in. I've traveled the world and talked at more conferences. That is good for me. Um, had more discussions. We actually started that in Stockholm two years ago where we tried to figure out how to solve this issue. And there's a reason for it because it's actually hard to figure out how to do this. And you know, it's great that we just provided you with a single div, but what the fuck am I going to do with that? You know, there's nothing in it. So how do, we, how do we work with that? Well, first of all, the idea is whatever you want to have it to do. That's the whole thought. It's your theme. You decide what you want to do with it. Unless you go with Classy or another pre-based theme, then you can go that way. Um, so for this illustration, I'm using a field and a value. Right? That's how they're all defined. And we're going to have actually four different variations of what a field can do. Single label, single and a label, and multiple and multiples with a label. That's the four different versions you can have. And we have one template to fix this. Um, so that means that you're going to have these four variations of a field. This is every field that comes out actually has these four variations. That makes the template a little bit complicated. And this is just so we don't hear people whine in about three weeks when you all begin to use Drupal 8 and be like, but Martin, it's complicated. Yes, we know it's complicated because it's complicated. Um, but we're grown as themers, so we know how to fix this. The other thing is that we have to manage display, which is figuring out kind of a UI, how to do the label, so we also have to take that, to take care of that, which means that now, we now, you know, we have, oops, a little bit fast, come here, yes. We have inline, we have a bob, and we have a visual hidden element as well. These are all the different things we need to take care of in one template without shooting ourselves too much in the foot. Um, so this is how the field template looks. This is how we control everything on it. To make it a little bit easier to get is we start by saying, okay, is there a label? No, there's not. Fine, we're gonna print these out. Doing simple if-else loops. And we're gonna go all the way down, and you can actually do the else, and that's where you get the single value with nothing in. And to make it a little bit like pseudo Cody, they would say if the label, if label is hidden, if there's multiples, well, print out multiples. If not, print out the single element. Else, okay, there's multiple elements of them. We need the label. We need to print this data out. And if there's just a label and the item, that's what we're going to print out. So now we know what kind of data we're going to have. Fair enough. So we can actually do this. Pretty easy. We don't even have to put the diffs around. We can just let them float as we want. But this is like our custom markup, and we can go that way. Fair enough. How do we then add the classes to it? Well, this is where attributes come in. And attributes is some sexy ass shit. Because um, that's where we can put all kinds of crazy data stuff in, describing our elements, and work with that. Um, so attributes can be a class, can be data, uh, you know, area tags, so forth. All of these different things are stuff we want to put into our markup. Um, in Drupal 7, we did this. Here you go. Here's all your stuff. Have fun. Do a regular expression on your stuff and try to figure it out. What we want to do in Drupal 7, well, you, you could try to do it with a preprocess or a GPL file uh, or a theme function that over, took over another theme function, which was really, really brilliant because then you have multiple parts of code. Now, so in Drupal 8, what we're doing instead is like all the variables through Clashy and push it that way. And then we're going to provide the classes. So we're actually going to provide all the classes inside of a template. Like, wait a minute, are we going to put all the templates, all the classes inside the template that the theme is already sitting in? He doesn't have to find a preprocess function and look for that and hope for the best? Yes, that is exactly what we have done. We have used a huge amount of logic and how front end does actually work. Um, so what you can do here is you can add a class to anything. And what I'm doing in this little example is I do a set class up here. So I create a little variable, I do a field, and then I add, you know, add the field name and do a clean class to make sure that if the field name has some kind of dumb data in it, we can still use it on CSS. And then down in my div, I want to put stuff into. I do my attributes, and then I do the dot add class. And then I can push the classes in. And voila, tags comes from another place, and here's my field tags. So you can then begin to like modify and play around with your tags as you want to. If you have an evil module that puts crap out that you don't want to have, or it came from somewhere you have no idea, you can do the same thing. You can do a remove class as well. We even have a has class. So you can test if an element has a class, then you can change the name on it. So in that way, we're, not, we're separating ourselves from whatever we figure out right now. We want to call stuff at Drupal, and you can control your own theme completely as you want. So to sum that up, you have you know, core can provide classes. Um, and they, it will provide some classes, like it's visible. We have very few things that's going to be provided by core. And we're going to have attributes, a module can push stuff in. And these attributes, we from the theme layer can then go in and work with. So if I want to remove the modules, well, I'm just going to do a remove module, and it's going to remove that and so forth. Um, another thing we've done with the classes now I'm down here is we have separated out all the JavaScript classes 
uh, that JavaScript use, uses, and so they will be named with the JS dash something. It is also to warn you as a CSS junkie not to fuck with this class. And pretty please, if you remove this class, stuff will break. These classes are not used, so you're going to see a lot of double classes. We have a foo class and a JS dash foo. The foo class is the one we're going to use for all the styling, all the pretty shit. The JS class is the one that JavaScript uses, just so you know. Um, so we have done a separation of that. So to sum it up, you know, you, to add in classes, you can, if attributes, you can remove them, you can add them, you can set an attribute, you can put in an ID if you want to do that, um, and print all of that stuff out as you want to. Um, and that's, like, that's how we took the control of how uh, CSS classes got generated and moved them away from being like, hidden down in the template in our pre and prepos function and actually put it out to the code. And if you're a developer and you ever fucking ever put a class directly into your module, you're a fucking idiot and you're pissing on us. <laughs> let, me just, let me just say that with a little bit of feeling. Because here's the thing, what we want to do from the front end we want to support our developers. We want to make the most beautiful themes we can do. We cannot do that if you hide this stuff from us. So if you give us that, we will help you out. We will take care of the designers for you. Isn't that a kind of an okay deal? We take care of the designers. You take care of the data. We can all like dance out in the sunset, have party all night. Um, so that's the attributes. Okay, so let's make field and attributes figure out what kind of sexy stuff they can make when they are kissing in a tree. So, go back to the example before. This is like my, just three different versions. We have yo, we have label yo, we have label yo, a hi, which is the Danish way of saying yo, hi. If you're Swedish, you say something else, I don't know. Um, so, Drupal Core, what it kind of put out, class, it puts out like these field label and stuff. So, just so you know why they're there. Um, the reason they're there is just to describe each element as a basic element. Um, good thing about that is like you have fields, have a field underscore underscore label and your field underscore underscore item. That's how all your stuff would be predefined. No worries, we're gonna remove all of them and put it in our own stuff because that's way cooler. Um, but just so you get an idea why we have done that and how we've done that. If you have multiple items and you have a label, you also have a wrapper around the field item so you can begin to separate them in your markup. So if you are not a front end nerd who do not wanna do all these things, you actually have a basic element and basic way we have described all fields. Um, but let's start with taking our field and fixing the markup. Um, that's gonna be the first thing. So, see here, if I'm gonna start. So, here's my fields. Um, it's just a bunch of you know, basic elements. I have my template up here, and you can see it puts out all this crap. And we, I mean, this should be an unordered list, right? That would make sense. Um, so let's start by doing that. So I'm gonna go in and just like override my stuff. As you can see, we have the, the markup is, is clearly put there. We have like item.attributes add class. We have the different classes up there as well. So I'll just reload it again to show you I'm not completely full of shit. Um, I should be able to so change it up. That way, fair enough, I changed the div to an li. Oh, hooray. A superhero. Um, but uh, if, we, if we take it like one step further, and this is actually where I kind of, kind of cut in my video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm removing all the classes, um, which you cannot see because I'm sometimes dumb and it goes a little bit fast when you have to like record these things. See, yes, as you can see up there, add class where I remove the stuff. There's nothing in it. So what's gonna happen now? Dun, 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 bam! Drupal, template, one field I wanna fix, and it's done. Nothing else, nothing more. Easy fucking peasy. Um, okay, fair enough. Let's put some colors and stuff on it. Let's figure out what we can do there. So let's try to take these libraries. Remember I talked about them at, at the start? I guess libraries, how do you actually use them? Well, let's, let's add them directly to a template. Um, so we're gonna do that. Uh, so you add a library. Let's see here, do we wanna start? Uh, 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 come on. Yes, okay, so here we go again. So here's my libraries file, and I'm defined a very, a field magic as I've called it, I'm added, adding in a CSS file called Barcelona. Is that right pronounced? Barcelona. Um, so inside of here, you can see I have some very magic, magic, magic CSS. Um, and I'm in my field, dash, dash, node, dash, dash, field, HTML file. I'm gonna do attach underscore library and then Barcelona and then call to that name of that library. So what's gonna happen now is, go in and look into my markup, just gonna search for Barcelona, that's CSS, 
boom. Now you have a template that is calling a CSS file only when it needs that CSS file. I think dude, that is pretty sweet. So let's, uh, let's add some classes. And just a fair warning, I do know this example I'm going to show. You can do that with just with CSS. I'm fully aware of how CSS3 works. I work with it on a daily basis, but I had to find some kind of example with colors in so you wouldn't like, fall completely asleep. Um, so here's my CSS file. And as you can see, it has a first and a last uh, elements, there's a border on top, border on the bottom, color blue, uh, color red, and color yellow. These are my colors I'm going to use for this example. Uh, if it want to run. And um, let's see here. So these, um, and this is again just like basic demo stuff to show, show the stuff off. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing set colors. I'm setting a variable that says color dash, and then I'm doing cycle red and yellow. And that you over loop index. So I'm going to cycle through the X amount of elements that's there. So, so I knew I was in Barcelona, so I thought I should keep it to these colors. I could also go with black and red instead. But, and then, you know, you push in your classes as you want them. That's all good. Um, so I put in a little bit more, and I go and test on this. So the loop.index is a thing you can actually test stuff on. But you also have loop.first and loop.last. And what they do is like the first part of the loop, the last part of the loop. You can test on that as well. So... So we throw in, you know, a last class and a first class, and as you can see, it's got a little bit of pretty, pretty pink on it. Um, another thing you can do is, uh, which is kind of fun, you can go in and you can do a count on stuff. So you can say, well, okay, if you're the third element, and by the way, Twix starts by counting from one, because it's built for humans and not nerds. <laughs> you, can, you can set it to count from zero if you have no idea how normal numbers work for normal people. So, you know, it is, it is proven for, for epic geeks. But I feel it very nice to say, yeah, first element, um, which is kind of nice. Okay, so um, so now we could do that. Well, okay, how about we just change stuff completely? When I hit number eight on my fields, uh, we're going to do another thing. We're going to play around with it a little bit. So I put in my huge blue header up there on number three, and it's still just printing out the markup. Well, what if I don't want to print out the values on the specific elements? How, how can we do that? Well, um, we will jump in again. You know, it's asked me here, when is Drupal 8 coming out? So um, and we know that is the eighth element of our list. So I'm going to do, do a count on an if loop index. So I wonder if I actually said it. Oh, shit. Sorry. God damn it. I thought I could stop it. So um, when you look at, when you're doing these loops, I'm doing, I'm doing a count on loop.index. Loop.index where we count stuff. So it says like loop.index 1 or here 8. Do something and else do something else. So I'm basically just wrapping out my data I'm printing out. I'm wrapping that out, and then I'm um, you know, printing the basic element out with the add classes colors in if I want to have them. And then here, you know, we're going to do some dumb stuff with it. Uh, I, think, I think I printed something out like just... Normally, uh, we would print out the data, but let's not do that. Let's just um, you know, remove stuff. And then do and uh, when it's ready. Because we know when Drupal 8 is coming out. It's apparently when it's ready. Not when it would be fun to have a beach party today, right, and celebrate Drupal 8 because some kind of politics and when you release stuff, that would be, like, completely stupid. That was not me being sarcastic at all, by the way. Um, so what I've done here is uh, I took the eighth element of an element and I ripped everything out of it and changed it exactly as I wanted. And I added in my CSS file to that specific field. So if this field is ever called, it's going to call the Barcelona file. And that, to me, is kind of giving it you know, pretty much um, complete uh, control over it. And this like, attached library thing, if you, if you ever looked into design components, if people are aware of design components, quick hand up, who knows about design components? Okay, the idea behind a design component is we take pretty much a piece of markup, piece of CSS, and a piece of JavaScript, and we stack that crap together in its own folder. That's kind of the quick way of exploring this. Uh, I kind, of, kind of telling it. Probably going to be beat by that. But in that way, we can actually begin to do these things in Drupal 8. We have talked about it if you want to try to push it in. I know that Lewis is sitting over there and is falling asleep. He's, um, <laughs> oh, I heard this so many times. No, we've been a big uh, advocate for it. We've been talking about it. We're not going to try to push it in in 8.0 because we kind of just want to get the shit out so we're going to play with these things. Um, so apparently it was not enough for you guys to go ape shit that we just got complete control over our fields. So let's see if I can entertain you a little bit more. Um, trick blocks, what is a trick block? That's a whole other thing we can do here. So here we have a page, and uh, you know, that page we can split up. 
And normally you would have multiple versions of a page template in Drupal 7 if you wanted to do something with it. Um, but what we're going to do here instead is we are going to put in a block, and inside of that block we're then going like, to call in other templates um, when certain things appears. The idea here is if I'm on the front page, I want to like, kind of inject a piece of markup from another template and like, smack that into my template so I don't need to have multiple versions of my page template. Did that make sense? Not at all. Okay, I made a demo, and this is using pretty color so you can get it. Um, so I'm here defining a block. We call this, by the way, not a block. We call it a trick block because else Drupal world gets really, really complicated. So this trick block is called Morton Decay is Awesome, which is a truth, and we're going to add you know, some, some stuff into it. First, we call it a trick block. Now, let's give it a color green. And the idea here is to say, well, if this part can be exchanged when certain things happen. So if my page template thinks that it should load um, the front page, it's just going to push in a little piece here. So here I have an element that I can exchange. Um, and if I load my page, you know, it goes like, oh, I'm a trick block. It's green now. Um, and we go in and we check in, okay, what kind of elements do we have to work with here? Okay, I have a page dash dash front. Um, let me just copy that. Not the note, the front. Thank you. Make a new file on it. Um, so this is kind of, it's using the extend command, uh, which you're probably going to read about or, or hear about. Um, and the idea is, again, you have a page and you can inject stuff. It's only, not only the page. You can do this on any element you can find in the world of Drupal. Um, so here I take it and take it, change it to green. And I'm going to make sure that it knows what to extend. And this is where video editing, by the way, is really, really awesome because that's when you figure out, oh, I wrote something wrong, and it's, that actually exploded the first time. <laughs> and let's see here. I can't remember. Do we still have to put the whole path in, Katza? Uh, we we can like we can use the shortcuts, right? Yeah. So you can use like an add class here or add theme name. You can go go that way instead. Um, so, so here's my note, and if I go back to my front page, um, I can change that. So in that way, I can like separate it out. So basically, what we did was this. I split it up in two. I used the used the block for that. Create a page dash dash front, which then Drupal thinks it should load because. But now that it knows this page, instead of extending it, it's actually loading the original page and shoving my page dash dash front into it, and then we're going to get that. So we now have complete control over markup. We can like play around with our pages. We can do all this stuff. And this is kind of where we'll, uh, are we happy? Are we happy yet? A little bit. OK. Um, another thing we've been working on very, very long, and this is like one of the key features that we've kind of been trying to he hide a little bit from people. It's actually been there for almost a year and a half, is this. Call it Screenshot 2.0. What Screenshot 2.0 does is this. Um, you can see here I'm defining my screenshot, and here we go. <laughs> that, is my that is the biggest feature we put into Drupal 8. Not removing all the diffs, not removing all the allies, not removing everything else and give you complete control of the markup and the CSS. No. Animated goddamn kittens is going to overflow our theme themes. That's going to be good. Besides of that, um, how does this feel? Menus and pages in one template file? So this is the menu. This is the only thing you need to theme a menu. Let me repeat this. This is the only thing you have to use to uh, menu because you can taste it and it says, if menu level shiver, well, add, add the class menu. Well, if I want to add something to level two, I can go with if menu level equals two. And do that way, and then, oh, yeah, we can move all the way down. We can do all this kinds of sexy shit. And using a macro, I'm kind of too dumb to really, really understand what this is. But one of the key points that we talked about when we built this theme system was it was more important for us from the theme layer that you can, you can see and feel and, and play around with stuff. You might going to break something. Well, so what? You're sitting on your local environment. You're going to break stuff. Of course you are. Um, but that's a feature. The same thing we've done with you know, the menu. Um, you know, pages is another thing that has always been fun for everybody. It's like, <laughs> not fun? 
um, we know it's a little bit long, but you know, this is, you have one template now for the page. Maybe we should use a little bit of time to rewrite this to something a little bit more usable, but you know, we have it now in, into one. Um, so let me see here. Okay, if, if you already fall asleep, now you should wake up. So we change all of these things. Besides of that, we also, this is kind of the, the strange thing we say. When I, by the way, we fixed it to Vitus. Um, but when I say this, instead that we kill support five, six, seven, and eight, people normally go, yeah, you. I'm kind of like, who fucking cares about IE6, 7, and 8? We fixed the business, boys. Um, markup, I've been cleaned up. Uh, HTML5, we're using CSS, Smacks, and BEM name-based. Um, we're putting modern practices into Drupal 8. We're not using IDs as a selectors. You know, because who uses IDs as selectors? Uh, we've separated out the JS, so JS will not interfere if you're just doing CSS and stuff. Um, yeah. Divisus pretty much killed 90% of all of the markup, which is rather nice. Um, you know, JQuery dependencies removed as well. Uh, we we you know, pushed in um, Classy. And the idea behind Classy is actually when we figure out in two years that all the stuff we have done for the last three years was really, really dumb, and we need to use another way of building our themes, and we really want to do that, we can actually build a new theme in Classy and do a Classy 2.0 or 2 Classy or whatever kind of dumb name we end up with. Um, and that was a really bad joke, I know. <laughs> um, no, so so these are the things that we have done for you so far. And there's, let's talk, I can see, like, I've almost, I'm actually keeping myself on time. I've speeded myself up a little bit. No, there's, um, I know that people have listened to me for years, have heard me yell and scream a lot of de at developers. Um, I'm not sorry for that. Not one bit, um, because we needed to do this. We needed to to um, to change what we have done for so long time. And the good thing is, the developers wanted that as well. Um, so I actually want to um, I want to bring out a little salute to the people who have um, participated in this. And actually, um, I know you're in the room. If you have ever done anything with with this the, the Drupal Trick group, yeah, we do we have the free Ruben Jiggle cards by the way? Are they anywhere? Um, I actually want to have you to stand up with me if you uh, help us out with this. Up and stand, stand up, stand up. Face the crowd. <laughs> Salute them. <laughs> well, because you know, when I look at Drupal 7, the only thing I want to do is ring with a bell and make it walk through the streets. Um, that was 45 minutes of everything we changed over the years. Um, before we go further, this is the link to the theme guide if you want to figure out how to actually build this stuff. Um, coding standards and our CSS is really important. If you want to learn about Smacks, go into read that. The documentation for Twig, there's a little bit more than my two slides, by the way, but you can go pretty far with this. Um, you know, a thing we really need now, because back when we did Drupal 7, there was no front enders besides of poor John Alpin who worked on Drupal 7, and none of us downloaded it until you know, six months after release. And then we went, what the fuck is this shit? And then we have been working with that for the last you know, five years. So if you would all do me this favor of actually downloading Drupal 8 and begin to hammer on it so we can fix some of the dumb stuff. I know we're going through these candidate one in very, very, very soon. Um, but we really need themes to work on this because so far it has been a very small group, as you saw, and me be sitting in the corner and yelling, no, no, this is wrong, we should do it this way instead. I used to wake up in sweat and like thinking, oh shit, what if I thought this wrong? But my ego as a Viking took over and I think I did nothing wrong. And I challenge you guys to prove me wrong or right. I don't really care, I, because we really need, we need funders to work with the theme there, because it's going to be our home for the next, you know, maybe five years. So all the dumb shit we have done at late Friday nights and pushing code in, it's might going to haunt us. If we figure out, find the stuff now, it's really going to change it. Um, so, any questions? There's a question down there. Could you run over to that mic and do it? Or yell it really loud and I can repeat it. He will work. He must be a developer because it goes so slow. <laughs> I might know this guy. If somebody want to file a code of conduct on me of talking crap of sweets, you'll find fair to do that. 
Yes. Uh, I noticed the menu level was zero, but I'm a human, and that doesn't work for me. Why isn't it one? Uh, I can't remember. I know that we re I removed it at a patch, and then somebody, somebody, this do wasn't it you who pushed it? Somebody pushed the class in. I, I killed it at some point. And then we got complaints because people couldn't figure out what we did of the class. And I answered snarkily back in the issue queue that it was a feature. And I think I just said it to won't fix. And somebody who was a little bit more human and not an arrogant fuck uh, went in. I have no idea. <laughs> was, that, was that good enough? <laughs> As you can see, the, the brain behind and the motor behind the theme layer has absolute first question he got. He has no idea. So this is why we need you guys to come in and help. I, I need some help. Uh, also, considering scope CSS isn't all that supported, isn't it a bit risky to uh, attach libraries with CSS to templates instead of as a global level? Well, um, it can be risky, yes, but if you follow like decent CSS standards and uh, go with SMAC's definition, go with BIM naming, and you actually remember to name your stuff correctly, don't use green class. You know, don't do that. Give them names that is like scoped in. Uh, it can be risky if this is more of a hey, by the way, check this shit out. You can actually pack in your slider with your slider template and you can attach a library and you can all that connect it into one folder. Um, so it's more of a food for thought and you can also do this stuff. You can break your theme in a million ways. We're just waiting to see it happen. Um, we're not saying that this system is, is, is fail-proofed or anything else. Because basically, how many, how many in here have built anything with Drupal 8 yet? Good. How many like to build in the theme system? Oh, about the same amount. So that was about, what, 5%? So we don't even, there's a lot of things we don't know yet. So yes, it is risky, but um, I mean, we're working in the front end. I mean, I'm just waiting for the next Apple keynote or Google keynote to them to push out another thingy we have to support. I mean, I, I wonder when they're beginning to get our, you know, I've, uh, iWatches, when they get a browser built in, I'm gonna be so happy for, all the work. I called that like exactly. five years ago, by the way. What? I called that like five years ago, watches I, with browsers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's not going to be better. It's just going to be worse. Are you done embarrassing me now? <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just wondering how modules, if they can provide a markup file for both like clean markup where it's just print diffs, and one for classy. Is that possible, or how is that managed? No, it, at this point it's not managed at all. What I would suggest people do is make sure that you push out you know, all the variables that you want to create a class for and so forth. Just push it out in the way that classy would do it, or the way actually your module would do it. Uh, an idea we've had for many, many years ago was actually creating a group called the Markup Marines, mainly because it sounds fucking cool. Um, no, the idea was actually having uh, front-end nerds who want to help developers. Uh, to create better markup, better elements, because it's not enough just to provide you know, the documentations. There is developers who don't you know, know how CSS works or how we work with CSS, which is perfectly okay. It's a skill set that is very far away from building you know, modules. Um, so at this point, no, but um, I, I would suggest that you know, jump on some kind of social media if you're a developer and yell out help. And um, we're getting more and more front-enders in. We are having the... Um, Group Front End United is getting bigger again, um, and we really want to uh, get more people involved and actually help our developers because this is not um, Thema versus developer. I know I've put it, up, put it up that way for many years because that's how you create a good, healthy rivalry, and you, know, you get people entertained, and you can, you can you know, talk crap about other people, and I think that is fun. So, no, but, but what we actually need is we need people to help our developers. We need front enders who know how to build these things. So we don't end up having a module that has a three border, three line border around, you know, certain elements. And yes, I've seen that in a module that many people have used and it's not good. Um, and we can make our baseline so much better. But at this point, no, there's no way of saying Clashy versus Core um, or Stark. I call it the Core because I just think it's Core. Uh, but classy is the idea behind separating the markup out and the classes out was that was a way where we could when we figured out we did wrong with classy we can kind of just push it out and we can create a new version of classy where we actually fix it up so we have taken the control and moved that <coughs> away from Drupal core where everything was living back in the days I would I wish that we could take every template and move that directly out into the theme directory instead but that's going to be a bike shed I don't have the energy for at this point Thanks. 
more questions. I'm not letting you off the hook yet, so you can just as well come with questions. I have a whole hour, and I'm going to fill it up. <laughs> All right, so there's a couple of things here, um, a couple of sessions that I actually really want to have people to come and participate in. Um, tomorrow at 10.45, we're going to have a buff, because there's a bunch of brave Belgians who think that we need to move Front End United to Belgium. Front End United, if you don't know about that, has been uh, one of the reason that we have actually done all this work because we were trying for f small, about, f actually ever since Jubilcon in Copenhagen, my home city, uh, we've tried to organize front-enders and get front-enders to come together and try to figure out how to fix Drupal because you don't get anything out of bitching and moaning. Well, besides of bitching and moaning, which can be fun, but it's not very constructive. Um, so we've been trying to organize people, get them together, figure out what we could do, and that's actually how we got Twig in. Uh, was actually by you know, discussing these things and playing around with these things. So tomorrow at 10.45, there's going to be a meeting around uh, the next Front End United, which is a Front End Drupal uh, camp. It's going to be a weekend in somewhere in Belgium. I'm not really sure where, but, I mean, the food is kind of French, but it's in German sizes, and the beer is pretty awesome. So, I mean, if it goes completely crap, we can know. We can always just eat and drink and have a good time. No, but we had to begin to build all of these things. We had to begin to look at how we can extend this thing. Um, and what we're also trying to do with Front End United is making sure that we're, getting, we're not ending up like only doing Drupal stuff and patting ourselves on the back for being like, yes, it's so awesome with Drupal because there's a lot of other things out there and we're getting slowly off the island and especially getting people trained in what we're going to do with Twig. Um, the camp, conference camp is going to happen at some point after New Year's because we know the next three months it's dark and it's cold and it's miserable and we don't want to do anything. Um, that's tomorrow, 10.45, uh, room 128, there's a buff there. If you do Drupal 8 work and you or Drupal 7 work and you want to figure out how do I put this stuff into Drupal 7, uh, there's a dude, actually a Belgian dude, Rene, who have done this. He have masked that stuff in. There's a session about how he got a uh, trick into Drupal 7. Um, I'm just looking forward to never touching smelling or knowing about Drupal 7. It's been seven years of pure hate-hate relationship. I do not know why I still stayed, but I did. Um, another thing is, like, all week we are running sprints. We do have a critical issue we need to fix. But it's not so much the critical issues, also all of the markup things, all of that stuff. We really need you guys to come in and help out. Look at the code. Figure out if a template is completely unreadable. You know, help with the documentation. So the next person who is like burning, your, burning himself down and figure out, you know, why is the menu level zero? Why is that? Well, if we know that, let's put that in as a comment so we can actually document that. On Friday, that's going to be the epic sprint day because, first of all, I am expecting us to have the RC1 buck done so we can celebrate that, but there are going to be a bunch of us. Uh, we are going to run multiple amount of sprints on different issues and don't really care about your level of expertise in anything in Drupal. If you have no idea how Drupal 8 works, that's even better because actually having people to download Drupal 8, trying to some of these things out, figuring out how to do documentation better, figuring out how to do all these things is really, really important for the project. So, even more important, tonight there's a party that all the locals and the Spanish community have organized, got a ton of sponsors on, and um, I, I can talk about this for months, but I would rather do that with a beer in my hand instead of talking directly at you guys and discuss all these things, so that is where we're going to be tonight. Um, it's, all, it's also on the website where you can see it's put in as like 30 minutes away from here on the L4. Um, I promised you that I would put my slides up, and I actually did. TinyURL uh, slash Drupal 8 Trick Baza is, the, um, is my template. Uh, if you want to give me feedback, and I would really like feedback on the session, as soon as the session is done, um, if you go tinyurl.com Trick Feedback, you're going to be redirected over to the um, DrupalCon website, and you can give feedback on this. Uh, the reason... Um, well, besides, of it's, it's, it's more fun to get feedback in the U.S. because there's always somebody who gets really offended by my personality, which is good. Um, but it's actually nice to figure out, uh, did I bore you to death? Do, do you get anything out of this? I love to talk about this. I love to travel around the world and become, try to become a better presenter, but also figure out if this is the right way. You have feedback generally on this trick stuff. If you just hate it and you want to use PHP template, Forever, you can still do that. It's floating somewhere around the corner in Drupal, right next to the Paul module or something. We still have it, so you can you can exactly you can you can fire it up if you want to keep playing in PHP template. 
I will promise you that I will never answer any questions in the issue queue for you ever again if you do that. But that's just me being an asshole. Um, so with that, um, I'm Morten DK, and I'm now not more the angry themer. I am the happy themer. Thank you all for showing up, and thank you all for uh, you know, not falling asleep. We was just pretty impressed. Well, besides of Lewis, who was like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, Lewis. Um, thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for actually sticking around Drupal and um, having a full room and doing this presentation is really, really nice for me. So thank you. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if you really like kick-ass stickers and you want to have something that's cooler than, than you know, the rest of the kids, I got this bad boy up here. But you have to come up here then so I can like hand them out. <laughs> 